Hi, this is Steve McChesney. You're listening to a voicemail that I'm making at speakpipe.com. Since my show is not live, this is your opportunity to ask me a question or leave me a voicemail that I can play on the air. It's the next best thing to being here. Just go to speakpipe.com forward slash Steve McChesney. That's S-P-E-A-K-P-I-P-E dot com forward slash Steve McChesney. And you can leave up to a three minute message. I look forward to hearing from you. Welcome to Rearranging Change, how you market to an ever-changing world. I'm your host, Steve McChesney. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to episode number 14. Now, we are on our uh, motivators. We talk about motivators every week right now. And, and I just want to remind you that when I, we're going to be talking about a particular motivator called generosity in this episode, but I want to remind you to use as many motivators as you can in your advertising. There's many companies out there, you know, even though we're only doing one per week, they use five, six, seven motivators in the same ad. And I want you to do the same thing. The more motivators you have in your marketing, the better result you're going to get. But today, we're going to talk about generosity. Now, generosity is anytime you give back. Uh, and people are generous. We are a generous people. That's why people tithe to their churches. That's why uh, around Thanksgiving, we give to the Second Harvest Food Bank, or we'll, we'll get groceries and buy a grocery bag at the grocery store to give to somebody that's less fortunate that needs it. We are a generous people. So if you can use generosity in your marketing, and what I mean by that is align yourself with a charity, something that you can give back to. I'll give you an example of how I do it. You know, a lot of you may or may not know that I have an app that I developed. It's called New Orleans at Your Feet. And you download this app to your phone. If you're ever visiting New Orleans, you'll download the app. And now your phone becomes your tour guide. You can do a French Quarter tour or a ghost tour or a garden district tour. We have a geo tour. So I have a competitor. There's actually a couple, but I've got one that's a real serious competitor who also has an app that you can use your phone as a tour guide when you're in New Orleans. Now, we also have the competitors of the real life tour guides, you know, where you can actually get somebody to walk you around and show you the city. Uh, but I'm going to talk about the apps because that's an apples to apples. Now, my app, it's $2.99 for you to do the ghost tour, for example. My competitor has a ghost tour and it's $2.99. We both basically have the same locations that we're going to take you to. We both have uh, audio so you can listen with your headphones. We both have geo tracking so we can tell where you are on the tour on your phone. So we're an apples to apples comparison here. So why would you want to download my app versus my competitor's app? Well, I'll give you a very good reason. Because for every penny I make on my app, I give 3% of it back to two different charities. I have a local charity and a national charity. Now, in every city we're going to be doing these apps, we're going to always give back to the same local charity, and that's going to be the police. So we're giving back to the uh, Fraternal Order of Police, the Louisiana Fraternal Order of Police. The police guard the tourists. That is our customers, so we want to give back to them and so they can help their families and the way that goes. We also have a national charity. Right now, it's the Carrie Ann DeMott. DeMott Foundation. Uh, my buddy Bill DeMott, his daughter was killed by a drunk driver, and he's got a very good charity uh, trying to stop and, and prevent driving and distracted. Uh, so it's the national charity that we give to. But anyway, we give 3% back from every dime that we make. My competitor doesn't give anything back. They keep 100% of it. Now, if you have the choice of buying my app or their app, do you think that the fact that I give 3% back would help your decision? Well, I know for a fact that it does. In fact, all of my brochures that are in New Orleans, when you get it on the back, it does show you that we give 3% back and it lists the two charities so you can see who your part of your money is going to. I'm a true believer that you give and then you receive, but you got to give. So if you don't give, you're still going to receive, but you're not going to receive everything that you can receive. Now, let me tell you, how adamant my wife is. Now, by, take, 
believe me, I'm not doing the 3% just for business reasons or marketing reasons. That's not why I did it. My wife and I truly like to give. We like to give back. If we're going to receive, we want to give back. My wife is so adamant about it that every quarter when it comes to writing checks, nobody gets a check before the charities. She makes sure that they're the first ones that are paid. Then we can pay staff and, and team members. But uh, the charities come first. So there you have it. This week, we're talking about generosity. If you can use it in your marketing, align yourself with a nice charitable organization. Give back. The more you give, the more you will receive. All right. When we come back, our buddy Ron Seji. My friends, I'd like to offer you a free copy of my international best-selling book, Rearranging Change, How You Market to an Ever-Changing World. Just simply go to rearrangingchange.com. That's R-E-A-R-R-A-N-G-I-N-G-C-H-A-N-G-E.com. Rearrangingchange.com. I will pay for your book. You simply pay for the shipping and handling. Once again, a little gift from me, Rearranging Change, How You Market to an Ever-Changing World. Go to my website, rearrangingchange.com, and get your free copy today. Back, and once again, we have my pal, Ron Seji. Hello, Ron, how are you doing? Cow? Wait, wait, didn't you call me a cow? <laughs> I said pal. Oh. Pal. Not cow. <laughs> I thought you called that, me a cow. That is utterly ridiculous. <laughs> oh. Uh, so now I'm the straight man. I just give them to you and you hit the, <laughs> hit the, yeah. the, the punchline, right? <laughs> yes. Well, you, you look like you're a little punchy today, Ron. That's it. <laughs> oh, yes, I really am. <laughs> Hi, man. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, Steve. How you doing? I'm good. I heard you talking about generosity. Yeah. And, you know, generosity comes in many packages. Uh, one of which is it's good for public relations in your business. It's good to have your employees think that you're generous, especially on payday. But <laughs> it's also good for yourself and your peace of mind. And I'm a firm believer in that. I, I really am. Oh, yeah. I, I've been involved with a ton of charities and because they meant something to me. I've been involved with Cancer Society uh, because I've had members of my family pass away from cancer. And I have a lot of friends that have done that. I'm a very big proponent of the Heart Association. I lost my father at 55 years old with a heart attack when I was just a teenager. Uh, I'm very fond of the Shriners Hospital. And recently I did a concert up in Pennsylvania, brought my entire orchestra up there. You were there for it. And we gave all the proceeds to the Shriners Club. And since I've been, I don't know, uh, the teenager, early uh, teens, late middle teens when I was First starting in the radio business, I was a Teenage March chairman for St. Jude's Children Research Hospital and had the pleasure of uh, meeting at one of the conventions and talking and taking pictures with and chatting with Danny Thomas and Marlo Thomas. I've been a strong proponent of St. Jude's Children Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. And I don't do that for bragging rights. I do that for feeling good rights. Oh, Ron, there's, you know, uh, Probably nobody, there's only a few people on the planet that know you as well as I do. And you have always been huge when it came to children and also veterans. Absolutely. Those are real. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. I really do. Because as you know, at the end of my stage show, I always say that, our, and I have our veterans stand up and I recognize them. And I always say the two most important people, classes of people, types of people are veterans and children. Now, we've all been children. We haven't all been veterans in this country, but we've all been children. Right. And the reason I say that is because if it wasn't for the men and women serving in the past, in the present, and in the future, there would be no past, present, or future for the children. So I strongly believe that. I mean, I believe well, that as much you, as I can. I know it's to the core of you, but it, you don't. You also put your money where your mouth is. I mean, I, uh, I have seen you make huge donations both to children and to veterans and uh thank you for that very much by the way and well, you're not thank a you for your service because you are one of those people you are actually you are two you are a child and you are a veteran and you That's, are a veteran i'm still kind of a child if you ask my wife <laughs> actually i i think that you still are yeah but you're but you're always a veteran if yes you i grow am. up one of these days you'll be an adult but you'll <laughs> always be a veteran hey listen who do you got uh Who's your interview with today? This is a unique kind of guy. At first, when I interviewed him, I wasn't familiar with the whole concept in the show. And then after several interviews, we got, became friends. 
And his name is John Taffer. He's got a show called Bar Rescue. And he has another show too, I think it's called Marriage Rescue. But Bar Rescue is very unique. A lot of people want to be in the bar business. Hey, they're, you know, passing out drinks, having a good time. Somebody says, hey, I think it's a very hey, social atmosphere. House. Yeah. Great social atmosphere. Yeah. It is a very social thing. You can be it behind the eight ball in a New York heartbeat by leaving the bar open to people when you're not there, giving a little extra shot, you know, taking a little more from the tip or, or jar or take, charging a little bit more. There are so many ways to pilferage in the bar business if you're not there owning it and running it that it's frightening. So he goes into these bars and he tells them everything to do from what bottles of whiskey and wine and beer to put up, what signs to put up, what kind of entertainment to have. I mean, it's a fascinating show and it's really applicable to any business. I mean, yep. regardless oh, yeah. of the bar business or a used car dealership. Yep. Well, let's take a listen. We're live nationwide and around the world. You're listening to Ron Sedgie today. Well, several years back, in fact, according to my calculations, uh, probably about six seasons back when it comes to television business, our guest was on with us introducing a new show. Well, i got to tell you something. The new season of his show, the seventh season, returns this Sunday at 10 o'clock Eastern and Pacific Time on the Paramount Network. It is called Bar Rescue. Joining us right now is John Taffer. Hi, John. How are you? Welcome back to the show. Uh, great to be back, Rod. It's been too many years. It has been too many years, but I want to tell you something. In the interim period, you have done one terrific job. I mean, this show is like the number one show on the Paramount Network. I mean, this is great for you. Congratulations, my friend. Uh, thank you, Rod. You know, I never thought it would run this long, buddy. I, I Honestly, I thought I'd do a pilot and go home. Who would have ever thought that... Uh, Right now, as we speak, as a matter of fact, I'm going to do my 194th episode uh, oh, today. So it's yeah. been a heck of a run. It has been a marvelous run, one that you are certainly are proud of and have the right to be. You're an author, now in the podcast business, a philanthropist, a business consultant, a TV personality, an executive producer. And i got to tell you, John, I'd love to run down some of the past awards and accolades that you've had over the years, but there's too many to mention. And I understand going into another franchise called Marriage Rescue? Well, Marriage Rescue, a uh, uh, red yes, is, is a new show that we've done on Paramount, and it's you know sort of my direct uh, uh, style of trying to help people with marriages. And uh, we did uh, uh, twelve episodes of that, six episodes of that show, and and uh, I'm excited about it. We'll see. Either we'll do more of those or more Bar Rescue next year. We'll see which of the two uh, makes sense. But both of them are very similar. You know, I, I'm really uh, I love helping people work through problems. I love leaving people in a better place. It's very inspiring for me. So whether it's a business owner or a married couple, to me, it's the same principle. I'm there to try to help them. Yeah, but how much different is it to when you're talking about a bar and a marriage? I mean, a bar you can control, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you know, a marriage is, is very similar. You know, and when you take a look at what makes a, a, a business work, it's very similar to what makes a marriage work. You know, continuity, uh, a belief in each other, uh, commitment, sacrifice. Uh, these are all the things that make a marriage work and make a business work. Yeah. You know, I found that accountability and being responsible for one's actions are the, the, the single underlying most important factor in both. Yeah. whether it's a business or a marriage. So there's a lot of commonalities between the two. Right? Yes, you're right. you got some common denominators there. Now, this season, you're going to include some celebrity guests, too, right? Oh, we are. We start with T-Pain Sunday night, which is really exciting. And then Marshawn Lynch is an amazing story of, of, of a very colorful NFL player who opened the bar in Oakland, his hometown. He named it after a friend of his, a teenage friend who was killed and filled the bar all with ex-cons and neighborhood people who need a second chance. And it's just an amazing story of a guy who really is trying to help his neighborhood and help his old friends in the neighborhood, but the bar's a mess. So I went in, and, and it's a heck of an episode. Uh, a lot of fighting, a lot of confrontation. But, you know, sometimes when you do these rescues, Ron, I teach them about business, and they teach me about life. Yeah. And that was one of those episodes where I learned an awful lot as well. One of my favorite ever. I think it's the third episode this season. You know, I got to tell you something. I think that a lot of people that get into the bar business, and correct me if I'm wrong, is because they have so much fun when they go to a bar, but they don't have the business acumen. Yeah, and unfortunately, a bar, running a bar is not very social. It's, there's a lot of paperwork. You got to manage beverage costs, food costs, labor costs, insurance, utilities. It's a tough business. And, 
if people get into it because of social motivations, I always tell them, build a bar in your basement. It's a lot cheaper. I remember you telling me that once before. Now, you had yeah. a couple of new businesses endeavors uh, that you started, Taffer's Mixologist and Taffer's Tavern, which I understand that uh, you can get a franchise uh, for if you, you know, qualify, obviously. But I love this idea of Taffer's Mixologist because you get all of these mixers that are already in the bottle. All you got to do is add the liquor. Yep. So two years I worked on that project. I wanted to create the greatest mixers in the world. So we have seven flavors. They're in Walmarts nationally. And I'm really, really proud of them. They're in glass bottles, so they're hot filled, so there's no preservatives in them. And they're sweetened with monk fruit, not sugars. And I'm really proud of it. And then we just launched Taffer's Seltzer. Taffer's Craft Carbonated Cocktails, and we're in five states. That's 5% alcohol. And that's a seltzer that I'm very, very proud of. So we've been working on a number of things, but, you know, I tend to keep it pretty slow, Ron. It has to be uh, something that excites me to do it. And the mixers took me two years before we'd get them to market. But, you know, when you say you take it slow, you have your hands in a lot of things, and I give you an enormous amount of credit for being able to juggle all this, in addition to the work that you do for St. Jude's Ranch for Children and the Ronald McDonald House. I mean, I don't know how you have any time to relax with your wife and uh, your daughter. I don't. Fortunately, I love my work. I love the charitable work that I do, and I love it so much that that it takes up almost 100% of my life. So I don't have a lot of time for personal things, but, you know, I do what what, what matters to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, giving up some personal time to help a Ronald McDonald house or help a St. Jude's, or, uh, uh, and now I'm very involved in something called Keep Memory Alive, uh, which is the Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health in Las Vegas with Cleveland Clinic. And, you know, we believe we're going to find the cures to Alzheimer's. Uh, uh, so there's a number of charities that I'm involved in, and most of my personal time goes to that type of work. John, you got to do me a favor, okay? You have to be able to come and visit us, not every six seasons, okay? I mean, you really got to come back because you're quite a guy, and, and I enjoy this show. I mean, I'm not in the bar business, but I am in business, and there's so many similarities that you have with them, no matter what the business is that you're in, and you know that being a consultant. So you got to do me a favor and, and return sooner than later, you know what I mean, my friend? It's a deal, buddy, I promise. <laughs> okay, and the new season of Bar Rescue, the seventh season of the show, returns this Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific Time on Paramount Network, and it stars our guest and friend, John Taffer. John, thanks for joining us. You're always welcome here. You know that. Uh, thank you, buddy. We'll talk soon. Hey, Ron, you know, one of the things that um, about him, he started as a bartender at Barney's Beanery. And, right. You know, I was a bartender before I got into stunt work, I was a bartender. That's when I first got out of the army. That's how I made money uh, while I was going to stunt school. But so, you know, it's funny where life leads you starting. I think there's a lot of bartenders who have become people that we probably hear of every day. So nothing wrong with the bar business. But he also talked about the fact that it's not social. It's a paper business. You have to know about, you know, how about what you're buying and, and, uh, what you charge for it. And it's really not social at all. And as you alluded to earlier, if you really want to be a social business, open it up in your basement, because that's the only place it's going to be that way. It's actually a business. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I had a very close friend that owned a uh, bar. It, it was a restaurant bar. It's a very exclusive place, but you know, he wasn't there all the time. And I asked him one time how he can control, as I mentioned earlier, pilferage. And he says, it's amazing. you got to know the tricks. In other words, if you're going to catch a crook, you got to have been a crook one time yourself. <laughs> you <know>? Right. <laughs> and I don't mean that derogatory. You know? But there's sure. ways even with a matchbook where they know how many shots you can get out of a bottle, a bartender. And if they play it right, they could take one shot out of maybe several different bottles of a particular liquor and bend back a match in a cigarette matchbox and determine where they are and before you know it if they do that enough times they can walk away with 50 100 200 dollars extra every night and never get caught and i never thought of that well you know it's interesting when i was tending bar uh, i had what they called a heavy hand you know my ounce or ounce and a quarter that i'm supposed to be pouring usually turned out to be about two ounces and you know my bar manager kept on telling me we got to watch the pp watch Watch, the pp and it's like like, um, that's not politically correct, by the way. That's percentage control. <laughs> so, but he kept on telling me that, but that's the way it is. Well, one of the things too, you know, this episode was on generosity. And we talked about that. And this gentleman 
is quite charitable himself. He yes, has he a lot of charities that he gives to. An immense amount of charities. And he's done that because he knows that the people, certainly from the standpoint of how that appears to the general public, people like that. And I sincerely think, knowing John, that he actually enjoys that. Now, there, well, there are people that get more thrill out of helping somebody else than they do helping themselves. I, I'm, amazing. I'm one of those people. I mean, I, you know, yeah, I know that. As you know, one of my, my philosophies in life is, you know, the more you give, the more you get. And you've got to give to get. So it just, well, I've experienced that firsthand with you. There was a situation that you and I were talking about a couple of weeks ago. And I called you up and pitched you the idea. And you said, ah, I don't know if I want to do that. And then about a half hour later, you called back and said, you know what? If you want to do that, I will, even though there's a high risk to it. Oh. You know, that's, I, and, you know, that, that's the, I know that's well, the kind of person you are. Yeah. Well, so in, the other thing I liked about this interview, and I haven't seen the show, The Marriage Rescue, yet, what, yet, but he talked about how marriage and business have a lot in common. And, you know, be, being married for as long as I have, and I know you've been married a long time, it is a business too. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, business tactics to marriage. Interesting. You know, I always say that when it comes to business and marriage, and I'm saying this absent my wife being in the studio today, but she'll ultimately hear me say this, and she's heard me say it in the past. Uh, the, the problem with equating those, and they are, is that it's tougher sometimes to correct a problem in a business environment where you've had a disagreement with a partner, an employee, your boss, whatever the case may be, than sometimes it sometimes is in a marriage situation because of the different ways that you can make up. However, I will tell you this, sometimes, you know, in a business situation, there is the atmosphere of saying, boy, if I don't get this right, I'm either going to lose the employee or I'm going to lose the job. In a marriage situation, when that happens, it is a catastrophe. Because yeah. if you're having an argument with your partner, it's one thing. If you're having an argument with your employee or your boss, it, if that association is broken off, you still have the business. But in a marriage situation, if you don't work it out, you got half the house, half the car, half the dog. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. Yeah. Uh, good, ep good, uh, good interview, man. I, I, I actually hadn't heard of John Taffer before, and now uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about him. So, excellent. Thanks a good. lot for bringing him. Yep. All right, buddy. Thanks, we'll see you next week, huh? Looking forward to it. Folks, don't forget, you can always catch Ron on his show, ronsedgy.com. You can hear it on the internet. Or if you'd like, if you listen to the USA Network, it's on Saturday and Sunday nights. Uh, but whatever you do, you got to listen to the show. And uh, hopefully when the coronavirus and the COVID is over with, we can get Ron back on stage and you can hear him sing as well. Uh, it's a, such a great show. Thanks a lot, Ron. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time on Rearranging Change. Make sure to visit my website, stevemcchesney.com. Sign up for my newsletter. We'll be talking soon.